Hi everyone, this is Heather Lottenden from the Flourish Academy. This is episode 413. I'm here with my good friend, Nicole Begley. Hey Nicole. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Okay, so you recently moved. Mm -hmm. Where are we right now? Charlotte, North Carolina with beautiful blue skies and 65 degrees on October 30th. <laughs> it is beautiful. Much improved from the Pittsburgh. So well, I love Pittsburgh. Yeah, I know you do. I mean, I know. winter weather is awful. So I drove down here yesterday so we could spend some time together strategizing because mm -hmm. we love to work. But I thought this would be a good video for a lot of photographers who are starting their business because you just moved to a brand new area mm -hmm. where you don't know anyone. You don't know anyone. You don't have clients. It is literally like starting your business from scratch. Yep. And that can be really scary for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It didn't seem to trouble you much. No, no. Okay. Because I know how to find them. All right. So what is the strategy for either someone like yourself who is in a completely new market or you're just a new photographer and you're like, how do I get clients? What do I do to find clients? What? Oh, I should add that you're a pet photographer. Yeah. You photograph yep. mostly, mostly, mostly dogs. dogs. Yeah. Sometimes horses. Mm -hmm. An occasional kitty. Okay. So what's the approach? What oh, are you, you right. going to do? You have no clients right now. Right. Right. So first up and like my biggest, one of my biggest things in Pittsburgh um, really as simple as SEO. So it's as simple as making sure my website is well designed. And by well designed does not mean like 30 pages of information mm, because mm -hmm. people are lazy and a goldfish has a longer attention span than humans now. So, um, yeah, less is more. Um, but it needs to be clean and easy to navigate and just you know, pleasant for people to be there. It's your storefront. Mm -hmm. So even if you're in a market where you've been for a while and you're getting referrals, the people that refer you, the people that they are referred you to are still going to go to your website. And if your website is like awful or just looks like it's out of 1994, then you need to update it. So, <gasps> okay, wait, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah. a question on that. How important or where do you rank the importance of your website versus social media? Oh, website 8,000 times. Because if they find you on social, they're still going to go to your website. Yeah, and All roads. No inquiry happens correct. without your website. None. And it's the only platform that you own. Exactly. Yeah. So if Facebook changes, mm -hmm. Instagram changes, Pinterest changes, you are completely yes. at their mercy. But you own your website, which yep. is why it should always be up to date. I mm -hmm. don't know why people resist this. I get a lot. Uh, of I, I get. And I get, it's, it's easy to put off. I'm the same way. I'm like, ah, oh, I should really update that portfolio that hasn't been touched in 18 months. But, um... Yeah, no, and Google likes when you update it. When you have fresh content on your website, it'll rank you higher, so it's a good thing to do. So yeah, so having that website and working on that SEO. Uh, so. you, had you already started SEO prior to coming down? Were you starting to put things like Charlotte? Slightly, or, Okay. slightly, yeah. So I started doing that. I didn't update my Google business listing until I got here because I thought they would have to verify my address. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I waited until I was here for that. Funny story, I did that and I broke my Google business listing and I got it suspended for like three weeks. That right. was not fun. I did the review and they send back the automatic one. I'm not eligible and I'm reading through. I'm like, but none of this applies to me. So I sent back in another request. I didn't hear anything for like two and a half weeks and I was busy with other stuff. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're just ignoring me. I'm like flagged in Google as I'm not allowed to have a business listing. They're like going to shut down everything. <laughs> Um, and then I got an email this morning that they're, okay, they're reinstating that. it. Okay. Because that's where all my reviews and stuff are. All right. So you have your yeah. Google listing. Yep. You're updating your website. You're doing SEO. What's yes. next? All right. Next up is you want to make it easy for people to contact you okay. and inquire. So I have been updating my website a little bit. And one of my plans here is to really revamp it and make it super simple for people to just say, oh, this is interesting to me. I'd like to learn more. Here's an email address. No contact form. Mm. I don't need your name. I don't need your phone number. I don't need to know about that because them giving me all that information is kind of like me asking them to like get engaged on a blind date. <laughs> you know, like, because they, humans don't want to be put in a situation where they have to let someone down. Um, so they don't want to fill out an inquiry form if they really are just, curious because they don't want to have to either ignore you or think you're going to spam them or keep calling them or tell you I'm not interested right now or you know they they just will avoid it and then where does that leave you right so being able to do that is an easy way to start building that email list that email list is also another place that you own even though you don't own the platform say MailChimp you own the emails in there and you should always have those backed up right um 
And so from there, you can start marketing to them, sharing, like as I discover new places around Charlotte, maybe I'll share them some dog friendly breweries, some great hikes, things like that, that my target market, because my target market's 35 to 45, 30 to 45, um, no kids, young professionals, so they're active, they're out with their dogs, that kind of stuff that they love. Um, and yeah, and so I can share that with them in the newsletter. I can create a fun download like that on my website that they literally just have to give me their email address and they get. Um, you know, just make it easy. Okay, but hold on. I got to back you up a second. Mm -mm -mm -mm. This is assuming that people have found you by doing some sort of search because people mm. in Charlotte currently do not know you that exist. That comes back to that they, SEO, they baby. They don't know your name. So you, so if somebody is currently, what we've discussed so far yeah. is that if somebody is searching online for a pet photographer, yes. you want to come up. Right. Agreed. And then you want to make it easy for them to contact you. Mm -hmm. You want to keep your website up to date. Okay. Is there well, any? Hold on, hold on. Hold on. So yeah. No, it's setting me up a good idea. Okay. Because... They're searching for a pet photographer. Yes. But what if I want to get in front of people that haven't thought about that yet? What would that look like? How would you oh, do that? I don't know. Maybe I should do a blog post on the most dog-friendly breweries in Charlotte. Don't you think someone might be searching that? That's a good idea. Don't you think that might come off? Maybe not one, but probably yeah. on the first page. Yeah. yeah. And then they're like, oh, here's our, oh, what's this website? Oh, these are interesting pictures of really Maybe cute I need dogs. These. Maybe I need dog Maybe first. I should look into this. Okay, um, that's so, good. So yeah. you're creating a demand even where it doesn't exist. So yeah. you could do that for a bunch of different things. Mm -hmm. Dog parks, um, and you can do it for different mm -hmm. locations using your SEO. Yep. Maybe the locations that are a little more affluent yep. or that have your target market. So you know how to do that. So this is, all, okay, but what this is is you being very wise about laying groundwork. Mm -hmm. You're laying a foundation for people to find you. Good. Okay, yep. All right. step and one. And then another way to do that is, oh, what about some other businesses that might share your target market? Okay, so should now you're talking about connecting. With them? Right. Yeah, I think we should. Right. And a way to do that is, again, comes back to the blog. If somebody contacted you and said, hey, I own this related dog business or related kid business, whatever, that relates to your genre, um, and I would love to interview you, take some pictures around your business, and do a blog post on my blog about your business. Okay, sure. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Right, right. So, they're excited. They, they, you, they, you meet with them. It takes like 20 minutes of their time. You write it up. You do all the work here. Like this is not them doing the work. And you know, you can offer, Hey, can, I can email you questions you can answer, or I'm happy to come in and interview you and just take a few minutes of your time. Give them options. And, um, and then you post that. And then when people are Googling, I don't know, that uh, dog food yeah. place in X town, whatever, you know, or the name of it, they're looking it up then that will come up because it's still going to come up on the first page because they're not going to have that much stuff about their business. That's still going to rank pretty high. Um, and then people will click on that, read that, see your website. And now you've made a friend that owns a local business <laughs> that, that is, is going to be yes. more apt to do partner marketing with you now that they know you, like you, and trust you. Okay, I like this because this is now about feet on the pavement. Yep. This is about you getting out in the community. You gotta get out from behind your computer. You do. You're getting out of your home mm -hmm. and you're meeting people in your community. And you're doing this, I assume, with as many people as you as you mm -hmm. deem appropriate. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. For sure. So, all right. Well, I, you guys are probably pretty busy now. I'm just going to keep you busy for a while, but I still have some more. <laughs> there are more ideas. More. And one of them, how I built my business in Pittsburgh and how I will be building my business here, I just... Um, donated to my first silent auction. Um, the Charlotte Humane Society has a big gala every year, so I donated a session and a product credit, a wall art or album credit specifically, so they don't end up with prints. Um, and yeah, and so Ooh. that is a great way to bring okay. clients in. Slow down. Oh. How did you find out about this? I mean, obviously, you could look up the Humane Society, yeah, yeah. step one, but then. Did you find out about their gala? Like, how did I you... happened to see it on some article somewhere. You're paying attention. Yeah. You're paying well, attention. The first thing I did when I knew I was coming here was I subscribed to Charlotte Magazine. The next thing I did is I subscribed to Charlotte Agenda, which is, I think, owned by the same Charlotte Magazine, but it's their daily newsletter. It tells you about what's happening in Charlotte. Smart. Different businesses, this and that. I then made a Trello board and started keeping track of, oh, that seems like a good business. Oh, that seems like a good shooting location. Oh, that, like brain dump for all the things. Um, I then went and spent like an hour on Google one day searching for all the different rescues of oh, like small rescues, yeah. big rescues, all that stuff made a board for that. Because then in addition to the silent auction donations, you can also go and do like session fee fundraisers, like charitable marketing. Yes. 
So like, hey, Greyhound Rescue, um, let's promote some sessions. Here's a special offer for your followers and X number of dollars from each session book gets donated to you. Um, Which they love. Yeah. Why would they not love and that? And then yeah. there are people love you because you are helping their charity so all of a sudden all everybody loves you <laughs> right. and you are meeting yeah. a lot of people uh -huh. this way too yeah. and you're getting your name in front of yep. a lot of people and your website yeah so this is where it starts to sort of crystallize mm -hmm. as you have your website you have this seo you're now meeting people you're sending traffic yep. there people are searching yeah. and it's starting to be but like are you the impatient type and how you know are you Sometimes. like make this happen quickly or how does this kind of play out in a, in a time frame it can happen as quickly or slowly as you want. The more you sit behind your computer and do nothing, <laughs> the slower the it will slower. go. slower, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I am, so I also run a um, online education, Hair of the Dog, uh, for pet photographers. So that is probably three out of my five days. And so my business is like two days. And I try to have focused days that I work on my business. Mm -hmm. So I will sit down, move the ball forward. Um, because whether it's another business you're working on or you're like, training your dog or you have kids or whatever life yes it's yes. easy for these things to get pushed down and not done well and that's because the return is not immediate exactly and the return is not always it's not always immediate it's not always measurable and a lot of these things you're playing the long game yes you know and, yes. and if you don't play that long game you're never gonna have any sort of security of booking enough clients because yeah. All of these things need to be long gamed out. <laughs> so in that regard, you're very patient. Yeah, I yeah. Think so. Yeah, you're impatient in that I want to get this moving. Yeah. But you're very patient because you know how important it is to play that mm -hmm. long game. Absolutely. It's critical. It's critical. Mm -hmm. So that was a lot of really good tips in order to get clients in here because that is everyone's biggest yes. sticking point. Yeah. I don't have clients, I can't get yeah. clients. And I want to mention something else too. Everybody's always asking me, what's the one marketing thing? What one marketing? Mm. They're looking for one thing. Mm -hmm. They're looking for of course. do X, Y, not even X, Y, Z. They're looking for do X <laughs> and then your calendar's going to be full. Even if you do X, Y, and Z, your calendar's not going to be full. There are two types of marketing. There is awareness marketing and what I call get the phone ring to marketing. So the awareness marketing is like, hey, people need to know I exist. Mm -hmm. And the get the phone ring is obviously getting some things booked. Yes. Um, so you need to do both of those. And I also find a lot of people getting really discouraged because they did a marketing strategy and they only got two clients. I'm sorry, you just got two clients. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, celebrate. A yeah. 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 Right. Right. And even if you do a marketing strategy and you get no one, it's not a waste. You probably still got some awareness. Next time you do it, it might be more successful. Maybe you've learned some other strategies. You can tweak it a little bit because. Everybody has to change it a little bit for their market and for their business. Yes. So I can tell you exactly what I do. It might not work as well for you as it does for me. So you might have to tweak some things. Also, do you have a number of clients that you like to get? Let me give you an example. So when I started out in weddings, I knew that if I could just get five clients, yep. if I could just, because clients beget yeah, clients. Right, right. If you deliver an exceptional experience, mm -hmm. which was always my goal, because to be honest, I wasn't that good at photography. None so I had, to. I had to, I had to. So I thought, okay, if I can get five and I was right, uh -huh. uh, actually my first year it was three turned into 30. Oh wow. And that was not because the photos were great. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't, it was yeah. because it was an exceptional experience. So do you think mm -hmm. in your mind, okay, once I just get this first handful of clients, it starts to then it just, does. yeah, it definitely helps. And I don't know what the exact number of that would be, but it's definitely, it just snowballs. I mean, by the time I left Pittsburgh, I mean, yeah, exactly. Yes. You have to be doing the experience, so you have to have people talking about you. But, I mean, by the time I left, I really didn't have, I still did some silent auctions, but I really didn't have to do marketing a no, lot. No, you didn't. You um, had a I still had base. to do some. Right. And certain times of the year, I had to do some. If I wanted to be shooting early spring, or I had, you know, like, I, I needed to be marketing then. But, like, to fill my main June or October, uh, no. <laughs> You know, was, done. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's just, it's definitely so important to think about that, that long game and, and know that there's no one solution for marketing. It's all of the things. Putting up a Facebook account or an Instagram account, because it's the latest thing, is not enough to get clients. You have to have a plan and you have to have a place to send them that you own and a way to keep in touch with them that you own. Um, so that you can play that long game. Okay, hey, where can people find you if they're interested in pet photography or learning more? Because you have sure. a ton of resources. I do, I do. I'm at hairofthedogblog.com. 
Um, that is the blog. You can also link there. We have a free Facebook group that's just for pet photographers or people interested in pet photography. Um, and yeah, all the resources are there. And then my photography website is NicoleBakeleyPhotography.com. And I'm also on the socials at those two handles. And also, you and I have a free training that is offered via your site because Nicole and I teach Lightroom and Photoshop, so post-processing yeah. for pet for photographers. Pet photographer. So we can link that up below yeah, so absolutely. people can check that out. Nicole yeah. and I teach that together. I'm actually really proud of that course. It's awesome. I think it's fantastic. And if you have any questions for, for Nicole, you can comment or reach out to her on her yeah. social accounts. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.